Welcome everyone to part 29 of Dynasty Warriors for Extreme Legends, and in this episode, we're going to be going to the Battle of Tong Gate. Now, Tong Gate is the infamous place where we fight Machao, and there's two ways to go about this stage. Either one, the base forces, which would guarantee a Shadowrunner, provided we do things right and have a lot of patience, or what I'm doing today, which is south-south side of things, which is a good place to grind all the way officers, or any officers for that matter that happens to be rather low. So, uh, here's the gist. We're actually on a drag down brawl against Machao's United Forces, who are all trying to protect Tong Gate from South South. Well, um, Here's how I should put this. I do believe there's only two Musou officers out of this and the rest are all generic officers. However, you can actually turn the tides of battle in your favor. I mean, this is only a 60 minute fight, but you can turn the tides of battle in your favor very easily. It's ironically harder on Shu because of the fact that uh, Han Sui has a chance to defect and he'll defect a lot faster in Shu if you don't do things right, as opposed to Wei, where you can easily just kill him off and be done with it, or if you uh, add salt to the wounds and make him defect, you pretty much won this battle and knock down whatever morale Ma uh, Machan actually has. Most of these guys are all high morale officers, so, they're, so that would basically mean <coughs> You'll be seeing these guys have some psychedelic glow to them due to the fact that they have extremely high morale. And it's not just the fact that there's that this is an old game on a high graphics uh, rendering. No, they have that blurring effect for every officer that happens to have high morale. This is a great place again for you to grind. Not only that, but a great place for you to actually get some high stats like defense, attack fantastic place but again this is also where you get Shadowrunner and Shadowrunner takes a lot of patience first things first you have to at least trigger the cutscene if you're Machao well, on Machao's side to uh, wait for Sal Ren to make the Ice Palace uh, in order to do that you have to clear out every person on the left side of the palace and that includes this guy i mean you have to clear out every person and that includes peng duh you gotta well yeah mara still have to be alive that's the thing talent. but i'm actually trying to cut through this because i'm practically showing you the best way to grind for this place because once you get the ice palace for the um the wayside you practically cut off at least three-fourths of the stage. So, I might as well just shoot, shoot for trying to uh, get as many uh, items and as many, you know, as much experience as humanly possible. I mean, yeah, looking like, I mean, it looks like I'm losing really badly, and I really am, but I almost have him. I just need to try to counter him and have him stop jumping at me while I'm trying to counter his stupid ass. Well, the duel went to a draw. But at least I can take him down now since we're in a wider space, but still. That's kind of bullshit how he just kept slashing me like that with that high jump slash of his. Wei Yan's a pretty good character to actually play as. And I find it rather ironic though that uh, Wei Yan is actually here in this battle because he, honest to God, did not have any place in the Battle of Tong Gate. In fact, his master Hua Xian, I mean Huo Xian, yeah that's what his name is, I'm trying to pronounce his name correctly, he honestly has no place in this battle either, but he's here too. In fact, he was like the regional lord that uh, in Romance of the Three Kingdoms, 
Wei Yan betrayed in order to make sure that uh, Shu comes into, uh, was it Jing Province? Yeah, I think it was Jing Province without any trouble at all. So yeah, now we have to go to, well, actually now I'm going after all the other soldiers, which by the way, failed in triggering the um, Ice Palace. But again, if I did trigger the Ice Palace, that would have cut off at least half of the stage, and I would have to wait until uh, the Ice Palace open in order for Cao Cao to actually um, converse with Han Sui. Speak of the devil, I'm about to fight him right now. <clears throat> but once the conversation takes place, as Machao, you got to make sure you destroy Sao Ren to get into the Ice Palace, to beat um, Shu Huang, and I think Xiao Ho Dun in order for the cutscene where the Stampede of Horses comes in. Now, that cutscene alone will guarantee you Shadowrunner. And also, um, Han Sui has to reject the offer. And that's basically how you're going to get uh, Shadowrunner. And that's more of a tedious process than just going in, beating down everyone, and lowering the morale of uh, Machao to little to nothing, which would make him an easier person to deal with. This right here is practically the Yellow Turban Rebellion for Wei, practically. Or I should say Lu Bu's Revolt for Wei. Because yes, you are fighting enemies that are... Uh, uh, <clears throat> that are high in morale. Sorry, I stuttered there for a second there. And you're going to be getting a lot of experience points early on if you're not already at max. If you are, you're practically just coming here for the plus two and plus ones to attack and defense. Which, by the way, is definitely a good thing. Having plus two and plus five, that just means... All you're going to be doing is coming here, getting stronger for the later levels, like, for instance, Gia P or uh, Mount Ding Jun, which I'm going to do in the next part. You're going to need a lot of experience points if you hope to stand a chance against Wei. I mean, in Wei's playthrough, sorry, not stand a chance against Wei, because you're practically fighting Wei. And also, there's one other uh, battle that actually is one of the harder battles in the game. For, I mean, just about the entirety of Wei's playthrough is hard. But there's one battle that would give you the most trouble besides Mount Ding Jun, and that's Wan Yu's Escape. That battle, that battle is a pain in the ass. Show us the battle of Chang Bong. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. That battle is a pain in the ass. For Wei, that is. For Shu, that's probably one of the easier battles in the game. So, let's see. Pengda has been defeated. Well, there's no point in me actually keeping him around, so let's go after Han Sui. If you honestly want to activate the Ice Palace uh, cutscene, you have to kill everybody in the lower left-hand corner first. Then wait for Sauron to make the Ice Palace. Because Machao will have a reaction like, huh? What is that thing? And all of a sudden, Sauron has an Ice Palace. Seriously, Sauron spent all this time making the palace out of ice? It kind of baffles me that he had that much time to do that. But Sauron is a skilled general, so I can't really judge him. Anyway, Han Sui also has high morale. He's kind of like a boss character here, too. So bear that in mind. And that's all you need to know. Quite frankly, you have only two Musao officers and the rest are generics. High power generics. So just like with uh, Wu and the battles in Jing province, 
this right here is not hard at all. So all that's left is to take down Machao and finally end Tong Gate once and for all. Machao is someone you should not... Oh wait, by the way, there's the uh, Musao line there. Machao is somebody you should not take for granted since he is a boss character here. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm gonna also take out these checkpoints so that way there won't be any more reinforcements coming our way. But for Machao, it would be best to take out the checkpoints. Because while you're focusing on Machao, you need to focus only on Machao. And not have to worry about people randomly attacking you for no apparent reason. Because once Machao has his sights set on you and you get distracted by somebody slashing you, Machao will just combo you to high hell. He's a pretty tough officer to deal with in this stage. So it'll be a lot easier to deal with him if he didn't have any reinforcements coming his way. And all of your reinforcements and all of your uh, officers are constantly keeping the pressure on him. If Han Sui was in the battle, this battle would actually be over. I mean, not like it'll automatically end, but Han Sui would still be highly, um, would still have high morale, but on your side this time around. So he would actually keep putting the pressure on Machao while you deal with, um, Machao himself. And no, you don't get to go into a duel with Machao. Yeah, I mean, it would have been easier if we could just have a duel with the boss characters. This is a Dynasty Warriors for Empires where you can actually do that, by the way. I mean, I think that only happened to me one time, and I don't know how to trigger that ever again. <laughs> but, uh... Oh wait, no, that actually happens when you don't take the capital, that's what it is. But, uh, here you can't really do, um, enemy officer commanders. And, just like Guan Yu, he also has the Lightning Orb. Or is that, uh, the level 10 Spear? Whatever the case, he's down for the count thanks to that Moose South line. And that should put an end to Tom Gate no and the splendid Machao. And if basically, Machao folks, you I just need to take the beatdown route for this. You, you'll be able to catch at least all of them and gain at least probably 20 or, I mean, oh, 10 or 15 attack and. 10 to 11 defense. And if you haven't already got a Vorpal Orb, you'll definitely get one here, because Vorpal Orbs are more frequent here than anything else. And you need Vorpal Orbs. Vorpal Orbs will help you. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we're done with the Battle of Tong Gate. In the next episode, we'll take on a rather annoying stage, which you can lose really easily in the Battle of Mount Dingjun. See you guys next time.